Hello everyone, it's Tom the Taxi Driver and in today's video I want to share why I became a London cabbie. The world is in a bit of a weird place and it can be really hard to know what steps to take. You know, take the internet or online for instance. It seems like there's a million and one directions people can go in and whilst that's amazing, it can be very, very overwhelming. So I wanted to make this video for my 22 year old self, you know, coming out of university, feeling like I was behind, not knowing what direction to take. And really now about eight years on, just showing that it's okay. It's okay to be a little bit lost in life at times. Oh, and be sure to stay tuned to the very end as I'll be sharing my own personal opinions on whether becoming a cabbie was a good idea or not. I had no idea what I wanted to do when I was at school. Just did the standard GCSEs, I didn't misbehave, but I wasn't a high achiever either. And throughout all of my education, the theme that I had running through was that I had no idea what I wanted to do. In fact, I remember one of those questions in primary school saying, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I remember just plucking the first thing that came to my head, and that was ice cream van man. <laughs> But I had no idea. I went to college because, you know, a few friends were going on to college. I didn't know what to study because I didn't know what to do. So I decided to study media. How rather apt, you know, I'm now filming for YouTube. Once college kind of came to a finish, all the tutors and everyone were saying, well, look, everyone needs to go on to university. That's the next progression. If you want to go forward in life, you've got to go to university. And I'm like, have I got to university? Like, I didn't know anyone in my family who did. So I was just like, Okay, let's do this. And all of a sudden I got caught up in that academic tide. What do I study at university? Well, the only thing I know, media production. So I went straight into that. I can arguably say that without the university experience, I wouldn't have had the motivation to do the knowledge. At university, you are expected to kind of go and do things off your own back. And the knowledge is arguably no different. I studied pretty hard and I came out with a first class of honors degree. But the issue was when it came to graduation, I remember throwing my mortise board up in the air and as soon as it hit the ground, I'm thinking, now what? That was when the academic bubble burst and you know you had to go into the real world. Somehow I got an email from Apple asking me if I wanted to get a job there. I think someone referred me and I went through multiple interview processes and I ended up working there for a few months. Looking back on it now, it was definitely a lost leader because I had to drive from Hatfield to Watford. So, you know, 20 minute, 30 minute drive, presumably pay for parking and then go work there at part time hours. I think around eight pound an hour. So it definitely didn't work for me as I was only doing about 15 hours a week. I wanted to go full time because I'd just come out of university and, you know, I was renting with some of my friends, but the option wasn't there. I actually got a job as a sales rep for Samsung. So I used to sell TVs and sound bars within John Lewis. And one of the roles that came as part of that was actually traveling across the country, doing some visual merchandising. As I was traveling around for this, and again, probably another job where I was earning way too little for the kind of work that I was doing, I stayed with a friend from university to break up the traveling between some of the visits I had to make. And whilst I was there, I learned about his dad, who was an ex-Met police officer, and that he'd recently done this thing called The Knowledge. I'd never heard of The Knowledge before. I had zero clue. I didn't even realize taxi drivers had to do this big old exam and what, I was probably 22 at this point. And he tells me about these things called the blue books. You just kind of go out, complete the blue books, and you become a cabbie. Seed planted. I didn't take up on that action. I just kind of saw this and in the back of my mind I'm thinking well he's ex-Met Police so if he's doing it now as kind of like a retirement thing can't be that bad but again seed planted I carried on with what I was doing. I did this kind of ad hoc job with Samsung for a bit and then realized that I just want some money like I've come out of university I've flitted and flattered from job to job and I've not really got anywhere. So I went to a recruitment agency and I got herded in with a load of other graduates. You have to wear a suit, you go to these recruitment days, we have to sort of prove that you're the best salesperson and why you're so good for the job. On one of these recruitment days though, I did have a company approach me and said, look, do you wanna come work with us as a salesperson? You're gonna be doing telesales and you're gonna be selling to HR managers, learning development managers. In my head, I'm just seeing pound signs. It was like 20 grand a year, working in central London, just off Fetter Lane. And I'm like, yeah, take me there. Oh, this is it. Like, Tom hits the big time. Like, you know, I'm working in central London. I've 
20 grand a year. Whoop, whoop, wow. Like, <laughs> I held that job for about half a year. And what really got me, though, was the commute. This is back, of course, when the city of London was really quite busy and you'd have loads of commuters coming into, into the city. Like, I used to come in from Liverpool Street and you'd get off and you'd see all of these commuters just trudging, like, head down, like they're going, they're on a slaughter line or something. And that image always stuck with me. I'm like, is this going to be my life? Like, doing this commute or some kind of equal commute to this job. I didn't mind the job. Like, I could actually get through the day doing these cold calls to HR managers. But... I had to wear a suit. I was sat in the corner of the office. I didn't actually ever meet any clients. And you're just picking up the phone all day, just selling training. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, how did it get this way? Like, what has gone on with my life? But I remember at the time I was reading Alan Sugar's autobiography, What You See Is What You Get. At no point in that book did Alan Sugar make call number 50 to HR manager and then all of a sudden his life was sorted. He had to create some kind of opportunities in his life to get to where he wanted. Now, I'm not comparing my life to Alan Sugar and you know, that oh, you know, this is what I've got to do to become a multimillionaire. But it was the idea that I had to make some kind of intentional choice. This job where I was selling training to learning and development managers was not intentional. I kind of had to look at myself and think, how did it get this way? Like, this is not related to what I did at university. And in fact, the only reason that I am here is the fact that the job title had the word graduate in it. When really that's just like a market employee to get a certain caliber of people to apply for the job. With that in mind, I just knew I had to get out of there and just make some kind of intentional decision, my own decision, not being guided by the money. At this point was kind of like my rock bottom. I really didn't know what to do here. Well, I moved back home with my parents. I went back to Essex and I took the very, very first job I ever had when I was 15 years old. I worked within a bike shop, car auto spares type place, independent shop, great bunch of guys that I'm still really friendly to to this day. So a big shout out to the guys at A1 Braintree. Still love them to this day. And without them, I would not have been able to do my knowledge journey and be in the position where I am now. So they deserve a huge amount of credit on my journey. Near Hoban Circus, you've got St. Andrew Hoban Church, and there's these little benches. They're actually like single benches, because knowing that people come out of the office, they're on their own, maybe on a phone call. And I remember sitting on one of these single benches and phoning up my old boss. Um, this is a really odd request, but can I like have my old job back? You know, on the face of it, it was like, look, I'm working in London on like this salary. I worked out that if I went back home, lived with my parents, the commute cost would be nothing because I could cycle to work. And I would be working in an environment that I knew that I enjoyed. I enjoyed, really enjoyed working within retail. I enjoyed working with that, those group of guys. That was a kind of a first step, just getting like a stable base and then I could work out what to do. When I moved back home, I came across the blue books that I'd ordered when I was living in London, the Taxi Knowledge of London. I'd actually bought them when I lived in a flat in London, hoping that, oh, okay, I could just sort of do some of these runs in London and I would learn a bit about London. But of course, I never done it. I just put them in the drawer and completely forgot about them. I saw this as kind of like a guiding light. I'm like, look, this is my option. This is my opportunity. My girlfriend at the time was kind of insinuating that she wanted to move to Australia. Now, I wasn't particularly interested in this. And come to think of it, I don't think I was actually invited. But this was the perfect motivation I needed for a couple of reasons. Number one, if we split up and she goes to Australia, well, I'm a proper loser. I'm living at home with my parents. First job I had since I was 15, minimum wage. I've got to do the knowledge. I've got to do something. And number two was that even if I wanted to go to Australia, I hadn't established any kind of career, expertise, skill, trade, that I could come back to here. If I would have gone, I would have just been escaping my problems and then I would have had to come back to the UK, presumably, and be like, right, let's start this all over again. I suppose the third thing was that my brother had recently bought a house. That was at the, the forefront, the highest kind of like notion of success I could conjure in my brain. I knew that on the wage I was on, I would never be able to get a mortgage by myself. If I complete the knowledge, if I become a London cabbie, I can work as many hours as I want to satisfy mortgage criteria to 
buy a house. That was my ultimate form of success. I've not done that. My perceptions have since changed on that. But it was still a huge driving force for me. I wanted to be able to be in control of my finances and my future in that way. Armed with those three motivating factors, I'm a loser, I need a trade, I want to get a mortgage, I got stuck in with the knowledge of London. Initially, my schedule was a bit all over the place. It was kind of a bit, oh, I'll go into London whenever. And had I actually got my head together at the very start, I could have shaved six months off of my entire knowledge journey. It took me an entire year to do the 320 runs that are evolved in the blue books. But once I got through those blue books, I was really quite hooked and I was seeing progression. And that was then affirmed when you start going for appearances and you start getting scores and your appearances. And I remember after doing like the first exam thinking, right, that's one score. If I've done it once, I can do it again. And I've done it a few more times. And then once you start getting your drops and you start progressing through the exams, you're like, well, if I got a progression, that means I can progress again. And probably about like halfway through my 28, so I knew just keep with the process. You've got this. So yeah, from December 2014 through till December 2017, I finally got that handshake. Three years and it all worked out. Now the summary, has this all been worthwhile? I can say in my personal circumstances, yes. I would not change a thing. I love the fact that I did the knowledge and the job that I now have offers an amazing sense of freedom. My very last job before I got my badge was working in Starbucks. As part of working at Starbucks, you had to kind of do every job role within there. So whether that was making the drinks, cleaning up the tables, or even scrubbing the toilets. And I remember it like, cause I was going off my appearances whilst I was in that Starbucks, scrubbing the toilets thinking, you know what, if I get the job as a London cabbie, like how amazing is it that I'm scrubbing this toilet now, but it's all gonna change just because of a few sets of decisions I made a few years ago. You never really truly work for yourself, I guess, because you know, I'm having to drive passengers within London, I'm having to turn up to London, but the freedom that then brings it's just awesome. It's brought me like a lot of other things in life as well. So one of the things I first done when I got my badge was that I learned how to snowboard. And that was awesome because I went up to Hemel Hempstead, learned how to snowboard on their slopes indoors, you know, a couple of hour lesson, and then just jump straight in my cab and drive straight to work. I just rejigged, reoriented my day around that. And now whenever I go on holiday, snowboarding is one of the things I love doing every year. I just park the cab up. I don't have to say to anyone, look, I'm going to take some time off. I just jump on a plane, take my gear with me and I'm there. It's just so amazing being able to do that. And even the cost associated with that, I could never do with the life that I had before becoming a cabbie. So here's another way of looking at this story at the end. It took me three years to get through university or oh, the knowledge of London three years of study, I get a badge and on that day, that evening, I jump inside of a London taxi and I am earning money. Both took three years. One of them just left me so incredibly lost, disillusioned and on this wild goose chase of what do I do with my life? The other, I'm straight into a job and effectively a career for life. Are you going through a difficult decision or point in your life? Maybe you're doing the knowledge right now. I'd love to know what you're up to. Just leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Alternatively, you can subscribe to my weekly Sunday summary. It's what I share where I'm working on, but one of the best things about that free weekly email is that you can just reply to that email and share the things that you yourself are working on. I love getting insight from what different people are up to. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.